activity, pre-launching or post-launching, you have to be clear on what data you're using and what actions can you take with using that data. So I just want to jump in. Uh, there's a, I mean, how many House of Cards fans here? People watch House of Cards, right? So <coughs> the story behind it is that Netflix used big data to figure out what plot, what actor, what duration could a show be, and the House of Cards was born. Why can't they create 20 more House of Cards? They're creating a new series every month. So they started creating pilots, uh, and they started putting out a pilot for testing. And what they found out was the pilots don't tell them anything, because unless someone sees three or four episodes, yeah. then they get hooked to a show. But by showing one episode, they can't tell anything. So the next five shows that they made based on the data bombed. And now they're deciding that they, they've broken the rules of you know, traditional television. They don't launch an episode once a week. They launch 20 episodes in the same day, and then see that their hit rate is actually getting better. Raghav? So I come from a background of, of big data analytics. I used to work at a big data analytics firm for a couple of years. But, uh, but when it comes to actually uh, bring out something that is extremely innovative, it is, it's very difficult to rely on past data. So just uh, kind of giving, giving an example of, of when we started out, we talked to a lot of people, and everyone said that, chai kon <laughs> It's a, you can't, uh, you're getting free chai in, in the offices, you, uh, you, you've got the dip bags which are available, you, you, you've got chai at the tela for six rupees, how, how can you sell it for 35 rupees or 40 rupees? But by the end of it, you have to rely on that gut instinct, and, and that's the only way that you can, you can really bring out that innovation. But that being said, after, uh, after, you, after you have things in place, when, you are, when you're talking about incremental benefits, then I would say that you know, things, things should be measured. Things, there should be an objective basis behind every experiment that you do, and then you can, uh, you can actually derive results from that. Yes, I wanted to jump in there. Uh, just to say Hello? Just to say that, you know, one of the things that, um, and I'm not plugging uh, my company here, but just as an example, uh, one of the biggest initiatives that we've done last year was something called Libno Negative. It basically talked about how you want to look at your life. Now, this didn't come from big data. It came from uh, the sense that, uh, that we as a newspaper figured, uh, by talking to people, that there's so much negativity around the place. And you actually start your day and live through your day with negativity. Uh, how can we, as a, as a newspaper, um, propagate a more positive life? And we um, didn't just talk about it and make a campaign about it. So what we did was, uh, having realized that our, and, and talked it out with our readers, that yes, they would uh, like to have a more, I mean, they would like to uh, you know, imbibe this initiative. Every Monday, we came up with a newspaper which was no negative news. Across 61 editions, no negative news. Even if there was the biggest negative news happening, uh, we would turn it into a positive. We would report it from a positive angle. So that, was, so that didn't come from big data. It came from, uh, so we wanted to understand the trends, but what we did was to be able to talk to the consumers, it's a combination of all of these things that makes, you know, big brands and big brand decisions and, and uh, great stuff happen on, on the side. Swati? Yeah, so we are an entirely online business. So for us, uh, being so digitally oriented, data drives a lot of decisions. And, um, <coughs> sorry, what we do is, um, sorry, my voice is going. <coughs> Okay, I think this is better. So what we do is that um, through Cash Karo, you can basically get cash back on anything that you buy online. Whether uh, you know, you're buying one of Amish's amazing books at Amazon, if you go to Amazon from Cash Karo, you would get extra cash back. So it's all about uh, cash back, coupons, deals, discounts. So data drives uh, everything from you know, sending targeted mailers to the audience, from uh, analyzing who are the repeat shoppers, what kind of stuff would they like. So a lot of our consumer um, retention and customer engagement is largely driven by data. But also because we are a startup, uh, going against data and following what our gut feel is, is very much in our DNA. 
So when people have good ideas, we don't wait for data to respond. We allocate budget to say, okay, let's go out and try something. Because the whole thing that we're talking about today in terms of being creative, coming up with a story, these are not things which are easy. Uh, you know, you probably have to do 50 wrong campaigns to come up with the one that sticks in the consumer's mind. So I think to do all those experiments, you need to go with your gut, like others have said, and just try it out. Just to add, just to add a point there, uh, I think one of the big differences that's there and uh, probably an advantage to e-commerce companies from a data perspective is that, you know, e-commerce is uh, like a shop where you are able to track everything that your actual consumer is doing uh, at each level and that's actual real data. One of the things that, you know, non-e-commerce companies would find challenging is that A, is that data real? Are the customers who I'm doing market research with, are those real customers? And B, is that sample large enough? and see kind of, you know, is it representative enough? That challenge is much lesser for an e-commerce company because all of your data, if you use it well, is available to you f uh, for the actual con consumers. Wonderful, and Amish, this prompts me to ask you, the storyteller itself, that your product is a story, but you've been a marketeer yourself. How do you see, uh, of course, it, marketing will be art and science, both. How do you use it or how do you see when you change from marketing the traditional way to come here. And I love what you said about the publishers look down upon a little bit of marketing and you've brought your own bit. So why don't you speak about how do you use data? Is it to do with the product or the product is made and then the data or science is only used to market it? What is your take on that? Um, you know, the, one of the benefits of not being a part of the corporate world anymore is that I can actually speak the truth about uh, what used to happen in the corporate world. Uh, most marketing teams, let's be honest, the primary use of data was essentially a CYA with the boss, especially if the boss doesn't understand marketing. Honestly, uh, this is how data was usually, usually used. Um, but to get good campaigns, uh, you need a good mix of your left brain and your right brain. Uh, we can't just be uh, saying that, look, try whatever, because there's, there's a cost to, to every attempt that you make. Problem is our education system is such that it trains only the left brain. Uh, ancient education, syst uh, education systems weren't that way. You used to train both your left brain and the right brain. What does the right brain teach you? It essentially teaches you instinct. Uh, so you need to learn to develop your instinct. Your instinct will not develop uh, sitting in an AC office and learning the market through PowerPoint presentations. You have to travel. Uh, you have to meet people, you have to meet your customers. And that slowly over time hones your instinct. You get a rough, you get some kind of idea, yeah, this will work. The second thing, one of the things that I've learned is actually you should do something creative. Even if you're not going to use that anywhere. Anything creative that you do actually kind of activates your right brain a little bit. And you can get some balance between your left brain and your right brain, which can actually work for a campaign. If I look back right now, the only kind of creative thing I did was I used to sing. I love music, so music kind of appeals to the right brain. And I was the singer of our band in I Am Calcutta. I'm sure that must have helped somewhere in getting the right brain wiring a little activated because our education system does nothing uh, to activate the, light, the right brain. So if you can find some balance on that, you can hone your instincts a little bit, which can help you find uh, better campaigns and help you pick the right data to, to use as well. Wonderful. And this one, uh, the next one is only for Amish and maybe one of the panelists I'll ask also to add. See, uh, with the new generations coming and, you know, we live in a tech world, digital, uh, we have hard copies of books and now there's Kindle and then we read it on the tablet and on the phone, the screens. So the art of storytelling, does it have anything to do with the changing medium or is it the same because I guess since you meet all the consumers of your product who are consuming the product, the consumption itself must be on many platforms. Do you find the product needs to be changed for the platform or the product remains the same, the consumption? I would love to have your take on this that I'm sure because you meet like people at 15, 17 who say no one read it on the phone, you yourself are ambassador for Kindle. What is your take on that Amish? And maybe I'll ask uh, Kakun or Addy to add to that one. Um, you know, I read this uh, research report and, and there are habits are changing because of uh, uh, 
you know, the, the impact of technology. I read this interesting report that the average uh, attention span of a youngster today is eight seconds. Uh, then his, you know, his brain, kind of the thought flits to something else. Just to give you a sense of perspective, the average attention span of a goldfish is nine seconds. Okay, so we are facing that kind of challenge, not just in our marketing, but in our books, in everything. Uh, so you have to instinctively have this thing of the storytelling flowing quickly. You cannot have any dull moment. Uh, like we've just launched a service uh, yesterday of selling the book chapter wise as a straight download onto your mobile phone. What this does, of course, you know, then suddenly there's a 250, 300 million smartphone market. That's a potential market. And the price for entry comes down drastically. It's not, you're not spending 300 bucks for a book. You're spending only 15 rupees for a chapter. Try it out. It's like a sachet, you know, buying a book on installments. Just try it out. If you like the chapter, then buy the next chapter. Now, think of the challenge for an author then. Every chapter has to be such that the, that the reader should want to buy the next chapter. Otherwise, he'll instinctively, yeah, chodo, yeah. <coughs> so the challenge I think for anyone in the communication space, whether he's writing books, making movies, making ad films, marketing, is a serious lack of attention span in today's day. Uh, everyone is so distracted. You have to capture attention span straight away and hold on to it. You can't let it go. I'll give you some, maybe some real life examples to add on to what he said uh, from my life. <laughs> I think when we are, when I started off doing, you know, marketing four, five years ago, you said TV inventory was expensive to buy. So run a 30 second ad on TV and run the whole one minute commercial on digital. That was a, that was a standard. <laughs> digital may free to lamba wala chalao. Now I think it's reverse. I mean, if you have a 30 for TV, you better have a 10 for digital because if you have one, one minute for digital, nobody's going to watch. Uh, and if you look at episodic content, you typically said, start slow. Don't have a big break in the plot in episode one. In episode 15 is the climax. If episode one doesn't have the climax, nobody's going to wait till episode 15. So yeah, episode one better be the best episode. It's like the opening of a Bond movie. The opening sequence of the Bond movie is to be the best sequence of the film. Then you make people watch the film and they crack that, you know, right then from the format. So I think the attention span and platforms are both changing the way we tell stories. But I think at the core of it, good story is a good story is a good story. And I think very interesting what uh, Adi you said and what Amish said because one can always question why does books even have chapters? Why it's not one full book without a chapter? Chapter one and 150 pages. But I could, one could learn from this whole conversation that even the TV serials like the K series, Ekta Kapoor's and I mean like they Amish no said, start, they, have no they have no start, they have no end and people are waiting for the next one to come. Right? So it's like buying that one chapter and People are waiting for the next serial to come and I know many people and we all know they don't miss it. So, do marketers do that? Is, I mean, we do one campaign which will only go for months and then another one and then we, we don't, we're not sure the customers who were there in the last time are there or not. I think a good parallel can be drawn. I don't have an answer to that but that's, a, that's something we can discuss. Absolutely. I, I just want to add one thing. It's also in the style of, of your book, of your ad film, of your movie, of your TV serial, everything. There has to be the sense of pace in today's day. So you find the books that do well, the sentences are short, uh, the, the, the sections between the chapters are short. There has to be this thing of keep the pace going. Uh, even TV serials, internationally they've cracked it a lot more in India, not as much as yet. But you're, you're, you have many shots, you won't have one long shot. You'll have many shots, just the feeling of pace, just keep it going. So you never let the attention uh, slip away. Because the moment it slips away, he's touched that dial and he's moved on. Uh, Very well said. Uh, you want to add something? No, actually, yes, and uh, uh, a little more uh, in context of the fact that uh, we were talking about uh, storytelling and one of the things that uh, as I keen to understand and uh, probably, uh, you know, could, you could leave that is that um, to me, and this is marketing of a creative product, uh, when you mark today, with the attention span being what it is, how do you, and you have to spread your marketing, the entire, uh, the entire value chain over a very long period of time because you've got to get them by, you know, you've got to get them really fast, get them early, and you have to stay with them for a very long period of time. I think it's a very uh, extremely uh, challenging task 
with short attention spans to be able to live with your product and, and the experience over a very long time, which is why I guess uh, Amish, you did all the things that you did, which is that you gave them a little bit of your chapter and then you got a song going and then you got a, you know, all kinds of visual products which normally don't happen with a book, right? So uh, that's what I thought was very interesting about it, that you got to have your marketing, you know, the, the marketing money or the ad spend to actually go f over a very long period of time, but you have to be very interesting in the way that you, given the short span of attention that we are talking about. No, wonderful, which also brings me uh, to a, a philosophical question and again a difficult one, but I think let's ponder. What about storytelling? Uh, what about Indian stories and Western stories? And, uh, and this one is to Amish as well, and I think you'll get some time to think because Indians, what about civilization's length? I mean, our civilization is thousands of years, so we have stories like Mahabharat, Ramayan, and every year our Tohars will come, Ganpati and Ram Dhammi, and it's a reminder, so we'll never forget, it'll keep coming. Versus some countries whose history is only three, four hundred years old, but whose education we are fed. And then we, I don't know whether we remember or not, like our civil... So what about that? What about story, which storytelling appeals to customer more? As a marketer, I may love to hear your view that use an uh, Indian context of a story, Indian story or a Western story. I could argue Tintin Disney is like Western versus Indian stories. Any take on that? Anything? Swati, we'll start from you. I think my view is that, you know, when Amish's books came out, what I loved about them was that finally somebody is actually taking pride in Indian stories and putting them out the way we have been seeing Western stories put out. And that is such an incredible thing because, like you said, our culture is very rich. We have a lot of stories, but we just don't present it nicely. We don't take enough pride in it. It's the same old age thing that people used to say, ki the foreign return guy is always better valued than the Indian guy. Chai uski degree kam hoy. 